Hi everybody, Patrick here from EscapeRoomElectronics.com and EngineeringShock.com. Uh, this is the PIR Motion Sensor Transceiver uh, Unit Video Manual. Uh, it's paired with the NRF 24L01 Plus uh, Transceiver Shield that was that recently on Kickstarter. This is the video manual. Uh, for this I've got the shield attached to an Arduino Uno. I've got the PIR receiver code in the uh, loaded into the Arduino Uno. I've taken the Atmega328PU chip from the uh, transmitter and I put it into my Arduino Uno and I've programmed the sample code um, which allows for this unit to pick up motion in any room uh, and transmit the address back to the uh, Uno and so we've got an address uh, bar here essentially a dip switch a 6-bit dip switch and what we've got here is the, um, labeled on the board we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 1 is worth 1 the address is if, if all of them are in the out position the uh, address is worth uh, is, is, is zero, so room zero. If there's motion in room zero, you know that all of the uh, addresses are off. So if I have um, one turned on, that's room one. If I have two turned on, that's, uh, that's room two. If I have one and two turned on, that's three. So it's essentially a binary uh, setup. Uh, one is worth one, two is worth two, three is worth four, four is worth eight, uh, 5 is worth 16 and 6 is worth 32. So you can create 64 rooms, uh, 64 different room addresses using this board. Um, and you'll see that on the serial monitor when we load this in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to power this up in a minute, but before I do, we've also we've got some stuff that's not utilized here. So uh, one other thing to mention is we've got a whole bunch of extra hardware here. We've got a 3-pin header. Uh, you can use a jumper that will be included to select high or low, 5 volts or ground, to one of the input pins. We've got a 2-pin dip switch that are normally pulled high. You can utilize that however you'd like. If you want to add your own buzzer, you can add your own buzzer here. There's also um, two more uh, unused uh, inputs here that you can access. So you can create your own code. You can modify it however you see fit. I provide the sample code. And you basically use the hardware however, however you'd like. So, again, right now, all this is going to do is when it powered up, it's going to calibrate itself. I'll show you that in just a second. And then what's going to happen is once there's movement, it's going to send back data to the uh, transceiver shield. And we're going to have the serial monitor up on the uh, computer. And uh, it will tell us what room has movement in it. So, first things first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to power up. These generic PIR motion sensor modules take about a minute to fully stabilize. So what I've done is I've programmed in uh, uh, just a little uh, blink setup, just giving the, the sensor time to adjust. I'm going to talk about the sensor in just a second because you have to set up the sensor. It's very easy, just a couple of uh, potentiometers, variable resistors on the back. So I'm going to power it up, and that green LED is just going to blink. And when it's done blinking, the calibration's done. So what I'll do now is I'll go over to the uh, my uh, computer and I'll op plug in the uh, trans or the receiver um, and I'll open the serial monitor. So when you open the serial monitor, it'll say motion sensor program initiated. And then once the LED once the LED stops blinking on the uh, on the PIR module, it'll be ready and it has stopped. And I'm in the same room and it says motion in room zero. So I've set the address to zero and it detected me. It's detecting me right now because it's set up about two meters away. Uh, you can set. The, I just had the setup in the kitchen. Works great. Uh, kitchen's upstairs, across the house, far into the house. Uh, if I move uh, again, see as I said, the program just basically tells you every time what uh, where motion is. So motion in room one keeps picking me up. So that's very simple. What I should have done, and I probably will do actually after this video, is I will make it so it's a print LN. So it it instead of going from uh, side to side, it just keeps lining it down here. So I'll make that change to the code as soon as I'm done this video. But that's really it. It's very simple. Uh, you have the sample code available to you if you've pledged towards the Kickstarter campaign, and you can modify it as you see fit. It will come to you uh, with the PI with everything connected, but the PIR sensor. And the PIR sensor, I'll show you how to connect it right now. So the PIR sensor is removed from the three-pin header. It only fits in one way. You're not going to be able to fit it in like this. You have to fit it in like this, just three pins, and it plugs in quite nicely, like that. Make sure it's at it's sitting nicely, and you're ready to go. Now let's talk about how to adjust the sensor settings right off the bat. For best results, uh, from this perspective, turn the, right, the left variable resistor uh, to 2 o'clock. As you can see, there's a little bit of writing on the flat end of the uh, tuning knob on the variable resistor. So it's set to the upper right, and the right variable resistor has the writing facing down, so 6 o'clock. Uh, this, this is, uh, I found, to be the best uh, 
uh, the best way to configure it. You can mess around with it, but if you you might find that uh, you don't get the results that you want with the motion sensor if you uh, if you don't have the variable resistor set to this. But again, feel free to play around. So, to roughly roughly two o'clock on the left, six o'clock on the right. There's a little jumper here. Uh, your motion sensor should have that jumper already placed. It's uh, shorting the middle and top pins. Uh, there's uh, uh, the 24L01 Plus can be removed um, and placed back in. If you are placing this in for the first time, just make sure that it is lined up perfectly and that you're not uh, you're, you're not misplacing it. it. Fits in nicely there. Now you'll, you'll notice is I've added a capacitor here. There's capacitance on the three volt line on the board, but these things act better if the capacitor is right on those leads, unfortunately. So there's a tube and terminal block right here that adds that allows for you to wire in your own power connections if you wish. You don't have to use this power jack. You can use this power terminal block. And what you do is you simply unscrew it put your, your wires in and then screw it in to tighten it. And there's two pins labeled 12 volts on the left and G and D on the right. So ground on the right, uh, DC ground on the right, 12 volts on the left. And it doesn't have to be 12 volts, it can be 9 volts. 9 volts is actually preferred, um, but 12 volts would be just as fine. Um, it comes with a 9 volt power adapter if you've pledged towards a, a reward tier that includes power adapters, in which case you just plug it in. Make sure that your that jumper is placed, your NRF 24L01 Plus is in, you set your room address, plug it in, let it calibrate, you're off to the races. And there's four mounting holes, uh, one on each side. So thanks for watching. This has been uh, another video manual by uh, engineeringshock.com. If, if you didn't pledge towards a Kickstarter campaign and you want to play with some of these, message me. At one point, I'll have these up for sale at engineeringshock.com. Thanks for watching, everyone.